Olivet. We're really, really pleased today to have with us the General Manager and Head of Administration for the Boat Yard, Luc and Julie Jurien. I'm going to say that again. Luc and Julie Jurien. Texas. Saying, saying Julie and Jurien back to back. <laughs> That's, <laughs> That's not easy. When we became involved in this boat yard, one of the first things that really impressed us was it's extremely rare to find management uh, in a boat yard that really understands the nature of the product the way you guys do. And it's really also important for us to talk about the fact that you and your family moved aboard an Alabat and sailed around the world for eight years. And what's more important for us is the fact that you purchased that Alabat and sailed around the world long before you became involved with the boat yard itself. So can I start by asking the most obvious question, why did you choose an aluminum boat and why more specifically Alabat? So we, we sailed a lot. And we always sailed on aluminum boat. That's um, from the beginning. <laughs> always aluminum boat. That's strong, safe. We weathered big storms, and we always felt um, very, very secure and, and safe. Okay. We went to Alaska. We went to Patagonia, and yeah. aluminum is the, the best um, material you can have to be safe in. Yeah, that's the both both performance and safe, and that's true. The, the reason we came to aluminium is I've I've sailed on aluminium boat my whole life, mm. so uh, my parents were actually chartering a seventy five uh, foot aluminium sailboat, um, so that the, the that's the material I know the most from the beginning. It's pretty typical to see the the aluminium boat owner especially those Alabat owners. I've looked at all these mm -hmm. you know, owner pictures and you always see a boat on the beach somewhere. Is this just a one-off or did you really find yourself beaching your boat on a semi regular basis? That's, that's very convenient if you need, uh, you're in a remote area, you need to do a maintenance on anything, you can. You can just beach the boat and uh, clean the hull uh, or work on your prop right. or check a, a rudder. Some arbor that you, you, you will dry on a low tide. Uh, so being able to beach is, is a real um, advantage uh, in, in those conditions. Centerboard boats, when you have very big following sea and following uh, um, wind, so you just go downwind and, and with the centerboard up. And in that configuration, the boat is just sliding on, on the sea. So you, you, don't get, you don't get tripped by your keel. So that's actually the, the safest boat in, um, in heavy weather. Another advantage that I'd love you guys to talk about, because I've seen photos, so I know the answer in advance, is that the centerboard being raised also gives you the opportunity to traverse canal ways. 180 locks. Yeah. <laughs> 180 locks from... Um, so we went, we, we, we left Caen in Normandy, yeah. uh, went up the Seine River uh, through Paris um, and then uh, connected all the, the, the small canals. So the size of the river boats is 5 meters per 35 meters long. Our boat, our OVNI 56, was 5 meter uh, beam, so we say, okay, so we, that, that's, that's okay. With the mast on the deck, we were 20 meter long. And so, we, okay. so we couldn't have done that with, uh, no. with no. another with boat. With a keelboat, yeah. 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 It seemed that you really took advantage of all the opportunities that a centerboard yeah. aluminum boat provided. Mm. Yeah. And one of my favorite photos, of course, was your trip to Alaska. Mm. And I, I'm, I'll question while, how often or if ever you found yourself, you know, close to submerged ice and you know, that had yeah. to provide... Very that. often, yeah, yes. very often. In Alaska, every day we got close, yeah, very close the glacier, from the glacier, yeah. 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 And, the, and, and you know the glacier, um, uh, during the life of the glacier, the, gla the, the ice just pushed the rocks and when the, the glacier uh, retracts, which is the case most of most of the glacier right now. So when you want to, to, to sail all the way to the limit of the glacier, you have to go over that moraine. Ah. And if you've got a keelboat, most of the time you won't be able to do that. Right. 
So uh, that, that uh, having a shallow draft boat is, is a real advantage in, in those conditions. So you can go all the way to the glacier and, and, and experience the beauty of, of, um, of the ice and, and having the boat right, right next to the glacier and see the wildlife around and, and uh, enjoy that. Um, that also allows us in, on, in other area, we, yeah. we went to Borneo Right. Um, and, and we went up river in Borneo and we could actually moor to the trees right. and right. anchor in the river and, right. and stay in the river. We wouldn't have been able to do that uh, with a kill. And in the Bahamas where the yeah. very shallow waters and you can go everywhere with the centerboard oh. or a catamaran. Yeah. But yeah. if there is a kill, uh, you can go. Yeah, that, that limits the lot the Bahamas, where, where you can go. Yeah. The safest place in the cyclone areas are usually in the mangroves. And, right. and you can enter very small holes with trees all around and, and just do a, a spider net right. around your boat and, and have all the lines tied up to the trees. You Bad events, unfortunate events of anything, mm. will yeah. only create more confidence, yeah. which is in fact the definition of anti-fragile. Yeah. Bad event can always happen, but you limit the, right. the risk with an aluminium boat. We did, we did uh, night uh, passages through the, um, uh, the inside passage mm. uh, along the Alaskan and, and uh, British Columbian coast. Mm. Um, and, and you can't go through there without eating a log. That, that's, especially if you're uh, uh, going, uh, doing night passages, right. mm -hmm. uh, even with big spots and the big lights, on the, you, you will always encounter one. If you do that with a glass boat, you, you end up with a hole in the hole. Mm -hmm. yes. um, uh, with an aluminium boat, you just hear, it's not, it's not comfortable. You, you, <laughs> you, you scratch just, the paint you, if you, you have paint. Blong, 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 and, and, and yeah, 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 and just sounds. move on. Yeah. Mm. The worst example I have with that was actually not along the the, the North American coast, but um, in Indonesia. Um, and all over Asia, you've got those uh, fishing concentration devices um, that they moor. Mm. And they can moor that over uh, thousands uh, of meters, uh, mm. like like in the middle, it, of yeah, nowhere. middle of nowhere, and they're they're uncharted. Uh, that those can be um, uh, a, a two hundred liter uh, steel tank, right? Moored to the to the bottom of the sea with a, an old engine or whatever. Um, and um, and they can be like v huge uh, wood and and polystyrene and and whatever. Some of them they even build a small shelter so they can shelter from the sun and from the rain on it when they come and fish. Um, we run through one of those pitch black eight knots under sail, and we just went right over it straight through it. True. Wow. Um, there was wood all over the deck. We just broke... Uh, uh, light, the, the green well, and green light? Yeah, the green light. The red was still there. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, and yeah, of course we checked. So we've checked in the, in, um, in the aft cabin if there was any, any problem. Um, uh, we, we, went, uh, we went all around, checked with the uh, lights. And I dived the day after uh, right. under the boat, and there was just a few scratches on the paint. Uh, you do the same with a glass boat, you end up with a hole, for sure. Yeah. I, I haven't sailed around the world for years on aluminum boats. What am I missing in my observations? Hmm. You missed a lot. <laughs> <laughs>